let's say minimum support is 50 percent let us say our database contains four transactions like this one three four two three five one two three five two five we do the first scan we find that <coughs> one transaction does not support it the minimum 50 percent which is in our case minimum support is two so what we do is we look at <coughs> the filter which contains of three sorry which contains of four elements with k equal which size equal to one now we expand each of them with one additional element from the original transaction database we find that whatever you had which is two and three and five and one we expand that we find item set like one two one three one five two three three five these are the item set which exists in the original transaction then we find out the support we find here that the support of 1, 2 and 1, 5 is less than 50%, which is only 1. So you eliminate them. Then you go and find out that the required transactions of size, the item sets of size 2, there are four such item sets which satisfy the minimum support condition. Then when you expand that to size 3, you find that there is only one which satisfies minimum support, which is 235. So thereupon, we get the final item set, which is 235 with the minimum support. So from that, from those item sets, you can now generate the corresponding candidates by eliminating those combinations whose subsets do not satisfy the corresponding criteria of a priori. But in our case, we don't have to worry about it because we already know that all the subsets of it are item sets at each level. 2, 3, 5, you see, if you take combination of 2, 5, 2, 3, 3, 5, or you take the combination of uh, two, three, or five, all of them yeah. are at size equal to one, at size equal to two, all of them are satisfying the, being the uh, frequent item set at that corresponding K. So basically this step is to generate candidates where we do not, we may have a candidate item set here, we don't have that example, but we may generate a K size set where we find that some subset is probably not a K array. So here, at the end of it, we will see that we will basically look at all the possible subsets which do not satisfy the criteria of um, being frequent. And then ultimately we get the uh, we get the uh, right uh, K frequent item case. Right? So look at this example. If you take A, B, C, A, D, B, D at level 3, and if you're expanding it level 4, you can generate A, B, C, D, A, C, D, E. But what happens is if you take A, C, D, E as one possible, you know, example of a four combination, the subset ADE is not there in the level 3. It's not there with minimum support of le at level 3. So you cannot have a frequent item set of size 4 called ACDE. So you have to restrict it to ABCD. That's the only one which satisfies. So this whole pruning is about removing those K level item sets where something at K minus 1 or K minus 2 is actually not satisfying the minimum support condition. All subsets need to be, so that's what we're checking, whether all subsets of the K item set are satisfying the K minus one level 
item set property. This is a very dry, uh, in sense, this is a very tight property, but what it gives us is in millions of transactions, it gives us a very tight control over what are the data items we're talking about. We're actually talking about something which is meaningful and we're talking about transactions. So what have we done? We've done the first part, which is identifying the set of items on which you are able to read them with some minimal support. So these are the items of interest to us. But what are the rules which govern this? So when you discover a set of frequent item sets, each one, they said different set of items, each item set now, KRE item set, can have multiple rules, right? So what does multiple rules mean multiple rules could be basically different combinations suppose you have three uh, item set like i1 i2 i5 you, see you can have different rules here i1 and i2 implies i5 i1 i5 implies i2 i2 and i5 implies i1 i1 implies i2 and i5 i2 implies i1 and i5 i5 implies i1 and i2 so th think about it this is a different combination that are possible so now till now you see if you go through the algorithm which we have walked you through till now we have never touched the confidence uh, which was supposed to be a guiding dimension. So now what we've done is we have added the new dimension, which is the confidence dimension. That's what we do in this next stage. So what we do is we go through all the combinations and we just eliminate those combinations which do not support the minimum confidence. And that's where we get your corresponding rules. So you find in this case, let's take this transaction database. Let's assume that your minimum confidence is something like 50%. So you can easily eliminate I1 implies I2 and I5 and I2 implies I1 and I5 because confidence in this case is two out of six or two out of seven, which is 33% and 29%, which is not necessarily what you are worried about. So, what is the idea behind this? This is again uh, saying that while I'm worried about a certain important component of the whole set of transactions on which you're discovering your associations, in this particular combination of items, we again have an interesting pattern in terms of the governing rules saying that those who buy I1 also buy, say, I2. Or I1 and I2 who buy, they buy I2 5 hours. So that's the idea, right? You buy with a high level of confidence. In a sense, if you have bought it, you also buy the second. So between support and confidence, they ensure that we're talking about uh, two things. One is, is the rule something describing a frequently occurring pattern. Second thing, is it talking about a uh, an, an important uh, association? Both become important. That's where association rule mining is a very important area for all these 